In a shocking twist of historical absurdity, it turns out that former President Donald Trump, in the throes of post-election denial, decided that if he couldn't stay in the White House, neither could American troops stay in Afghanistan or Somalia. So, in a move that makes a hasty exit from a party look like a well-planned strategy, he signed off on an immediate withdrawal of all U.S. forces. But wait, there's more. According to the January 6th committee, senior officials saw the plan and collectively said, nah, we're good. Imagine the sheer audacity of not following through on an order that would have been, as Rep. Heter Adam Kinzinger, who, by the way, actually knows a thing or two about the military, pointed out utterly catastrophic. General Mark Milley, the guy you'd want to bring to a strategy meeting, was apparently left gobsmacked by the withdrawal orders. It's like showing up to a group project after four decades, only to have your classmates suggest you scrap everything and start over, with the deadline being yesterday. Oh, and this all happened right after Joe Biden was declared the winner of the 2020 election. Timing is everything, right? Let's be clear. This wasn't exactly America's finest hour of military maneuvering. Sure, we managed to evacuate around 140,000 people, but it came at the cost of 13 service members who tragically lost their lives to a suicide bomber. And in true Trump fashion, he later went on to do the one thing he's consistently good at, confuse everyone by conflating the Medal of Freedom with the Medal of Honor. Spoiler alert, one you can buy from a Trump merch store, the other you earn through heroic service. Big difference. In the end, Trump's wreath-laying performance felt more like a finale in a dark comedy than a solemn tribute. It's almost as if he thought that by standing there, wreath in hand, he could distract everyone from the fallout of his chaotic orders. Newsflash, it didn't work.